Okay, let's have a look at equilibrium in relation to solubility of ionic compounds. So we can evaluate the solubility of an ionic compound through an equilibrium expression. And before we look at that, let's have a look at solubility in relation to um, ionic compounds. First of all, if we have a, an ionic compound that dissolves readily in, in solution, we generally regard that as infinite solubility. Obviously, once we get to saturation, that salt will no longer dissolve, but we can effectively think of that as um, infinitely soluble. We get other salts that are moderately soluble, but then we get a great majority of salts that are what we call insoluble. And that word insoluble implies that there is no solubility at all. However, every compound has a degree of solubility. Some of them are just very, very small. So equilibrium expressions can help us calculate just how soluble compounds are. So we need to define a term. And we define our solubility product, KSP, as a constant that relates to the solubility for a given reaction. So let's take an example. We've got nickel hydroxide here. It's in solid form. If we put that into water, it will dissociate into nickel ions and hydroxide ions. So just like with our equilibrium expressions, we can create an equilibrium expression that specifically relates to the solubility of this reaction. So we get our products over our reactants. We discount any liquids and solids because they have a constant concentration and we only take into account our aqueous components. So for this particular equation, our solubility product expression will be the concentration of our nickel times the concentration of our hydroxide to the power of 2 because we have 2 moles of OH- here. Now, if we calculate this expression and we find that we have a value of greater than 1, that tells us we have a very readily soluble compound, either moderate or infinitely soluble. On the other hand, the smaller this value for our KSP, the less soluble our compound will be. Now, I'm not going to do a, an example of calculating the solubility product, but we are going to look at how to go in reverse and calculate the concentration that's actually dissolved in solution. So let's look at how we calculate what's called the molar solubility and ultimately the concentration of ions in solution. So we're given an expression here where we've got silver carbonate dissolving from solid form into silver ions and carbonate ions. We use our ice table as we've done before and our initial concentration of our ions before we put our silver carbonate into solution will be 0 and 0 uh, moles per litre respectively. We're also given a solubility product of 6.3 by 10 to the minus 12, so a very small number, which means that we're not going to get much silver carbonate dissolving in solution. Now we work through the steps, we find that our change as we approach equilibrium, we're going to gain two lots of silver ions to every lot of carbonate ion. So at equilibrium, we're going to have 2x for our silver ion concentration and x for our carbonate ion concentration. So we set up an expression just as we did when we were doing equilibrium expressions. In this case we're going to have our silver ions raised to the power of 2 from our original expression times the concentration of our carbonate ions raised to the power of 1. We substitute our value in for our KSP given in our question our 2x for our silver, silver ions, and our x for our carbonate ions, and we come out with an expression of 4x cubed equals 6.3 by 10 to the minus 12. If we then solve for x, we get a value of 1.1 by 10 to the minus 4 moles per litre. And this number here is known as our molar solubility. Now, we can also extend this question and say, well, that's okay, but exactly how much is dissolved in solution? So at equilibrium, the concentration of silver in solution will be two times this number that we've given in our molar solubility. So we'll have 2.2 by 10 to the minus 4 moles per litre at equilibrium. Similarly, our carbonate ions, 
because we don't have a um, or because we have one as our molar ratio for carbonate we find that our concentration of carbonate dissolved at equilibrium will be 1.1 by 10 to the minus 4 moles per litre. So we can, we can glean three pieces of information from this. We can either calculate our KSP given concentrations, or we can work in reverse, calculate a molar solubility, and then ultimately the concentration of our ions in solution.